Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a cataract with grade 5 nuclear sclerosis. There is coloboma iris and genular defect for on clock hour at 5 o'clock. The eye is highly myopic and the calculated eye well power is only 4 diopter. The ocular surface has been thoroughly irrigated with bases applying few drops of Bobidon iodine. And now we are going to start the surgery. The main incision is triplanar. It is being made with the help of a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. The ocular surface is supported by a cotton-tipped Jensen bar, and no tooth forceps is used. This is a side port on the right side of the main incision, three clock hours away. Another side port on the left side of the main incision, almost same distance away. And now, see the oozing of blood from the incisions. When you do the incisions, you can include some capillaries in the wound. And Healing is much better if you include some capillaries. The anterior capsule is being stained with tripan blue dye after injecting an air bubble in the anterior chamber. This is adrenaline and phenocaine. Phenocaine contains tropicamide, lignocaine and phenylephrine. The dilatation of the people is okay and if this dilatation is maintained during emulsification of the nuclear pieces, we will not require any people expansion device. The anterior chamber is now filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And now capsular excess is to be done. I'm taking a needle to incise the anterior capsule and erase a capsular tag. And now I use the utrita forceps. I find that the people has become small. So I inject some visco and the because of Visco, people dilates a little bit. And now I'm doing capsulorexis. Capsulorexis should be made in such a way that we don't go down into the colobomatous area. Size of this people, it's a size of this capsulorexis is about five millimeter. Though the cataract is hard, I didn't do a large rexis in this case. I have to manage with this 5 millimeter rexis. For that, I have to divide the nucleus into smaller pieces. Visco again. And now I'm going to divide this nucleus. Before that, I'm rotating the nucleus with two hooks bimanually. Visco again. And now is the time to introduce the FACO needle. The wound is enlarged to about 3 millimeter. And now here goes the, the FACO needle. In hard cataracts, the wound size should be 3 millimeter so that there is some leakage from the wound and the wound remains cool. The FACO needle has been placed in such a way that the bevel is sideways, goes deep into the substance of the nucleus, and I'm trying to get a crack. I've got a crack, but the fibers are too leathery to give up. So my plan is to gradually go on chopping 
and later on should get these pieces separated on more crack the crack is good but the piece is not separate Hold is also good, but the too stubborn, leathery posterior plate. So I emulsify the you know, central endonucleus. Till now, I have not got any free nuclear fragment, and this is a free nuclear fragment. I go another round, hold the pieces, and go on separating. And I have been able to separate all the pieces. So I have got about five pieces, and now see what I am doing. I am keeping two pieces down all the time and I am trying to hold the pieces which are near 12 o'clock so that the bag is you no know, the two pieces downward they support the colobomatous area so two nuclear pieces are removed now my plan is to remove this piece. Hold this piece, again push one piece down to support the colobomatous area. Then finally, this piece and only one piece remains at the last. And at this time I'm trying to peel off the epinucleus and remove the nucleus and finally with low vacuum and low flow rate remove the epinucleus. So the nucleus has been nicely managed. And now is the time to manage the cortex. I inject some visco and fill up the SC and the capsular bag. I take a Simco cannula, go through the side port and remove the cortex which is at 11 o'clock, which is subincisional cortex. Then I try to remove the cortex from the colobomatous area. Always remove the cortex from the colobomatous area at the last with extreme caution. Don't hold the capsule and pull the capsule. There is some more cortex remaining at either side of the coloboma. So I fill up the AC and inflate the capsular bag with visco and then finally remove this cortex. And now is the time to implant the intraocular lens. Fill up the AC with visco. The lens we have got for this patient is a renal hydrophilic intraocular lens, power of the lens is, as I have told, it is 4 millimeter, and here goes the intraocular lens. And the lens goes in the capsular bag. One haptic of the lens is placed at the colobomatous area, so that it supports the capsule in this area with genular defect for about one clock hour. Now I remove the visco 
a portion with the Simcoe Canada and then I take the bimanual irrigation aspiration and do some irrigation first. I go behind the eye wheel and irrigate the space between the lens and the posterior capsule. Then I irrigate and aspirate for some time. And finally, all the visco that is used for implantation of the intraocular lens is removed. This is moxifloxacin. The side ports are closed by corneal stromal hydration. The microscope used in this case is OMS 800 from Topcon and the FICO machine used is Faro's posterior combined machine of Faro's from Otley. Now the entire chamber is nicely formed, integrity of all the wounds are checked, few drops of moxifloxacin is instilled on the ocular surface and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will give you some tips to manage such cases. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.